Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Vulcan, because Vulcan 1.3 was released. Now for most of you, even if you are a game developer, you're probably not going to deal directly with Vulcan. This is pretty low level stuff, but it's really important in the world of game development, because this is basically the way that your code or your game engine talks to your graphics card. Uh, it's run by an industry consortium called Chronos Group, which is made up of like all the video card manufacturers, game engine makers, and so on and so forth, and it's a standard way of talking to your graphics card. Now it competes with technologies such as DirectX 12 uh, or uh, Metal when you're dealing with uh, Mac OS products, and it's kind of the spiritual successor to OpenGL. Uh, and again, they just shipped Vulkan 1.3. Now, mostly this stuff is dealt with by the people who do the renderer for your game engine or whatever. If you're not writing your own renderer, you probably don't need to deal with Vulkan, but if you do need to deal with Vulkan, you're probably going to like 1.3 because one of the things it does is makes things easier and a bit more standardized. So we're going to jump in today and take a look at what what is in the new 1.3 release? Uh, this is a new specification only, but the thing is, since AMD and uh NVIDIA and ARM and all the rest of them are part of the consortium. They had a heads up. There's day one drivers available for NVIDIA. There's beta drivers available for AMD. Uh, the Mesa Foundation has merge requests in to support this. So this is pretty much something that is available right now. So what we're looking at right now is the blog post announcing this. They've got details of their public roadmap. Now, I'm not going to go into a ton of details on this because this stuff is really in the weeds. This is very technical, um, very specification based stuff. And frankly, I don't write Vulcan code, so I am not the best person to explain this to you. And to put some perspective, to draw a triangle up on screen using Vulcan 1 took about 1,200 lines of code. So it's not something that can be really easily covered in just a quick video. Uh, but what we're looking at today is Vulcan 1.3 specification was released incorporating and mandating proven developer requested extensions to make that functionality consistent across all supported platforms. So basically, in earlier versions of Vulcan using extension mechanisms, they added um, support for new features and functionality. With 1.3, what they're doing is making those extensions part of the standard so that they can be more relied upon for being there. Uh, being more reliable, by the way, is a common theme here, as we're going to see. They also released a public roadmap to provide guidance on uh, when and where more advanced function Vulcan functionality will be supported. Um, it's a milestone for mid to high end hardware, defines the features beyond Vulcan 1.3, so kind of forward looking to 1.4 and beyond. And profiles will be introduced with tooling in February 2022 Vulcan SDK to precisely specify, manage, and use API capabilities. It's basically a way of uh, device manufacturers to say this is the base function functionality we support. And already Google has uh, introduced such a thing for Android, for example. I think it might be the only uh, profile example that's out there right now, but it does give an idea. And again, the common theme here is, you know, device compatibility. So one, Vulkan 1.3 will have a more common baseline of functionality so you can more reliably use the APIs. And profiles will tell you reliably the minimum base set of Vulkan compatibility on X hardware, such as, for example, Android. Uh, so we've got Vulkan 1.3 incorporates a number of carefully selected extensions. Uh, these include dynamic rendering, uh, additional dynamic state, improved synchronization to API, and a range of other features. Um, crucially, unlike other previous releases, no feature added to Vulkan 1.3 are optional. So that, again, is going to cut down on some of the complexity and fragmentation in the Vulkan ecosystem and is a good call. So that means Vulkan 1.3 compatible uh, devices in the future will have full support in Vulkan 1.3. should make using Vulkan 1.3's functionality nicer. Uh, as with previous versions, Vulkan 1.3 is designed to be accelerated on OpenGL ES 3.1 class hardware, enabling the core API to support a wide range of devices and markets. So if your current device is capable of running OpenGL ES 3.1, it is theoretically capable of running Vulkan 1.3. Of course, it does need drivers, uh, but with something like the Mesa project supporting this, it, it should be available on almost all devices with OpenGL ES 3.1 class hardware. Uh, many Vulkan device support functionality on the core specification through optional extensions, which individual hardware vendors may choose to support or not. Uh, the Vulkan roadmap aims to consolidate the support for select extensions to provide a common functionality baseline in key markets. Now, the concept of extensions being used by um, you know, AMD and NVIDIA for adding new functionality to their devices is nothing new. It goes back to the world of OpenGL, and it does create a nightmare headache for developers to support, by the way. So this consolidation, again, 
is a good thing. Uh, the roadmap uh, announced today is the first defined milestone in the roadmap. All Vulcan Working Group hardware vendors actively developing mid to high end devices for smartphone, tablet, laptop consoles, and desktop platforms are committed to supporting this milestone, starting with several shipping products in 2022. Requires support for Vulcan 1.3 plus a number of extensions the Working Group considers essential for targeting the market, including descriptor indexing, uh, fragment shaders, stores, atomics, subgroup support, and fragment shader, independent blending, sample shading, anseotrophic uh, filtering, uh, YCBCR sampling, and scalar block layout for buffer resource. Like I said, this is very, very technical in uh, nature, um, so we're not going to go into the details about what the heck any of that actually means. Also raises the minimum value for many hardware limits, including the max image and image uh, array dimensions, max subgroup size, and various limits on how many resources can be accessed per shader stage. Uh, we've also again got Vulkan Profiles. It's a mechanism for providing precise specifications and management of a set of API capabilities. One of such example out there is the Android baseline uh, profile, which is basically saying all Android devices uh, beyond this point will support this level of functionality, these extensions, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, and then we got a couple quotes from the various different people out there, such as AMD, um, saying that AMD beta drivers are available for developers today. Final support expected in the next few months. ARM chimed in. Uh, we will support Vulkan 1.3 and the roadmap profiles on all of our Mali GPUs. Uh, Google Stadia said something. Uh, and then, of course, NVIDIA right here uh, says Vulkan 1.3 drivers that support the roadmap on Windows 10, 11, and Linux are all available right now, which is actually pretty quite impressive. So uh, if you want to check out Vulkan 1.3, you can do so. Now, if you are an end user, such as, say, a gamer, you get literally nothing out of this today. It's not going to make your games run faster or better or anything. It has to be implemented by uh, the game engine people or the game developers and as well as the driver people. So right now the driver people are on board, at least at a beta level. Now it's up to the game engine developers and game developers to actually utilize this functionality before you see any real benefits here. And a lot of the stuff that we were talking about in Vulkan 1.3 is more about making working with Vulkan more a pleasant experience, not necessarily um, about making things faster or new shiny capabilities. Now there is some of that in there, but this is more about, again, providing a more consistent ecosystem for developers to work with. Uh, so we're dealing with, uh, again, fragmentation going forward, which is a lot of what this is about. And then also uh, we brought in some new features, including the uh, dynamic rendering, which we'll get into a little bit more in a second. So this is all about streamlining render passes. Um, there's, again, details on the roadmap. We're not going to go into that again. It kind of, this overlaps with what the blog was talking about. So I will make sure that uh, I link this as well. Uh, by the way, there is, uh, the Vulcan Working Group is hosting a uh, webinar on February the 1st if you want to learn more and you can register right there. So if you're interested and, and you, you want to learn more about Vulcan, I'm going to just set your expectations accordingly. As I said earlier on, earlier versions of Vulcan uh, and the new um, rendering extension should actually make this a little bit easier to deal with. You have to don't have to set up the render passes or sub passes that you never supported anymore. But if you wanted to work with Vulkan, you needed to write 1,000 to say 1,500 lines of code to get a triangle up on screen. Well, this here is the Vulkan 1.3 specification in PDF format. I will link this as well, by the way, if you want to go ahead and check this out. I just, again, want to set your expectations accordingly. So this is the specs table of contents. And... Um, yeah, let's just keep going here. We're down to, oh, there we go, 3,587 pages in the specification. So that, again, the only people that really have to deal with the specs are um, device driver makers, maybe the people at Unreal Engine or uh, Epic, uh, sorry, uh, Unreal Engine team or the Unity team, etc. cetera. Uh, but it does give you an idea of the kind of complexity you are dealing with here. Vulkan is not the simplest thing you've ever gone to work with. Now, the one thing that is kind of interesting in, in the words of simplicity is this new VK uh, dynamic rendering extension that is now going to be part of the standard. And you can see here some of the problems they're talking about. Other APIs have much more flexible APIs for the same functionality. Most of the render passes APIs uh, go unused in Vulkan. Most applicants do not or cannot use sub passes, but still pay the cost of setting them up. The API does not fit for most existing software architectures. Fundamentally, other than load and store actions, they do not access, um, do not address real issues for um, independent hardware or software vendors. And when teaching Vulkan as an API, well, it's a pain point. 
Uh, so there are three different solutions, and they ultimately went with the third one, create a new API that pairs down the information required to the bare minimum. So that's going to be nice. In order to set up um, the rendering functionality of Vulkan due to this new uh, setup, it, it's going to be much more streamlined. You do not have to create these render passes. You can see an example of it in action here. Again, this is getting way more into the weeds, but it should make learning and dealing with Vulkan a much much more simple, which is definitely a good move. And yeah, uh, if you want to read a little bit more about the streamlining of render passes, they actually did a blog on that as well. Kind of walks you through uh, how the VK KHR dynamic rendering uh, works, fixes things, makes things better, uh, and some of the feedback on it. So if you want, again, I will link that as well. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is that Vulkan 1.3 specification is out there right now. Uh, NVIDIA has shipped drivers today. Uh, AMD has beta drivers out there and should ship in the next couple of uh, months. Uh, uh, Arm is on board for supporting this. The Mesos projects has merge requests in as of today to support this and should have it in their next release. So Vulkan 1.3 is a new thing. Again, as an end user, you're not going to notice much out of this. As a developer, you're probably going to find Vulkan a little bit better to work with, a little bit less fragmentation, a little bit easier to get things up and going, and you're not paying a cost for functionality you don't necessarily need in terms of setting up render passes. So ladies and gentlemen, that there is Vulkan 1.3. Let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.